Hi, this is Victoria Sullivan from Sullivan Sundries. We're located in New Hampshire. You can hear the fan going in the background because today is a balmy 95 degrees with high humidity. So, not one of the best New England days that we get. So, I already have my some of my oils heated. I'm going to just add the shea butter. My lye water is already pre-mixed. I always mix that outside. You can see I've got gloves on. And we had a little spill today, so it's always important to have gloves on because you you don't want to get lye water on you. It's, it's not a fun time. It's kind of a nasty burn. You also don't want to breathe it in, so you always want to make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area. And when you're mixing the lye with the water, always measure your water out first and then slowly mix the lye into the water, not the other way around. Um, I've never tried it the other way, but I heard it doesn't go so well. So I'm going to stick with what I know. So just be careful when you mix it. Do it gradually and wait till the fumes are gone before you bring it in. Um, some people do it in their kitchen with a ventilated stove. I prefer to do it outside. So I have some of my oils heated here. I'm going to measure out my shea butter, like I said. I just wanted to do a quick little tiny tutorial on this because some people may not have done this before. So I've just got this little scale here that I got at Walmart. I think it was it was less than twenty dollars. My crock pots. Um, this one actually was a hand me down from my mom, but I also picked them up at Savers or Goodwill. And a lot of my mixing utensils I get there too. I mean, you can start making soap for you know not a lot of money. So I've got my scale on. I'm going to be measuring out. Ten ounces of shea butter. So I've got this reduce, reuse, recycle. I've got this old coconut oil container that I use. I used it for the other oils, so you can see it's got a little oil residue in it. And I use that to measure. So when I put that on, I'm going to hit the ZT button, and that turns it back to zero. So it's not. It zeroes it out. It's not measuring the weight of the container. So then I can get my ten ounces straight from there very warm today so the shea butter is very soft the coconut oil is liquid okay. Six, five. I hate even using gloves with this because it feels so good in your skin but I haven't used my live water yet I would usually mix all my oils and then as they're melting go do the live water but because we're filming it I just wanted to Mix the lye water in essence of time, like I said. Okay, I'm slightly over here. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, there we go. Okay, then I'm just simply going to pour it in. Even though it's a pretty big mouth container, it's a splash. There we go. It's a little hard to get it out. You can use a bowl. I just, like I said, reduce, reuse, recycle. There's no sense in buying things when you've got things around your house you can use. And I'm being messy because I'm trying to look in the camera while I do this. I'm not usually, <laughs> not usually this messy, I don't think. I keep trying to check the camera to make sure you can see. All right. So there we are. It smells so good. I love the smell of shea butter. The only thing with using shea butter is sometimes it's a stronger smell than your essential oils. So you just have to keep that in mind. I'm using lavender and eucalyptus today, so those are both really strong oils. And so you're just going to let those melt. I have a handy dandy mixer over here that's going to help me speed it along a little, although it's not very kind to the ears. So here we go. Wow, I'm really splattery today. It's not really that splattery. I'm going to use the lower speed. I don't splatter so much. So all 
I'm doing here is I'm helping along the melting process of the shea butter because it can take a little time if you just let it sit. Seamus, honey, your kettle. Sorry, it's summer, my kids are home. making some ice tea today. God, it's awful heat. Okay, so you can see it's all liquid now. There we go. It's all liquid. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the lye water, which caused a little problem for us, like I said this morning. We had a little bit. I got distracted and we had a little spill. All right. Which is not good, but sometimes unavoidable. Especially if you're working from home. Okay. And immediately I'm going to go to rinse that off. I said you don't mess around with your lie. Lie is what they use to unclog sinks. It's very caustic. Okay. Now, my lie's in here. You can see it turned it on a pretty color. But that will change. So what we're doing right now is we're mixing the lye with the fats and then we're going for saponification, which is when the lye and the soap come together for a chemical reaction. I mean, the lye and the oil come together for a chemical reaction, which turns creates your soap. Um, there are all kinds of rumors about soap without lye. People will say, I don't want lye soap. You cannot make soap without lye. You can't. Even glycerin soap is, in its original form, had lye in it to produce it. Once this is saponified, it will no longer be lye. It will be considered in the chemical world will be considered a salt so it's no longer caustic once it goes through these processes so I'm doing hot process soap you can see it thickened up a lot this is called light trace um, other people do cold process well, you don't have to heat it you get your you melt your oils and then let them cool to a certain temperature I believe they cool them to about the same level as the lye when you mix the lye with the water it gets very hot so I believe when they make cold process soap, they cool the oils until they become the same level as the lye, or cool, let the lye sit until it becomes the same level as the oils. There's a small percentage um, in there that you can have as a differential between the temperatures, but it's not too much. I tried cold process soap once. I'm just not that patient. It takes about six weeks, four to six weeks to cure before you can sell it. And I really like to know what my product is like sooner than that. I'm just impatient. I want to use my soap right away. So with hot process soap, you can use it as soon as it's dry, but I usually let it cure in this heat and humidity. It will probably be a week before I would send it to the store. Normally it would probably be, you know, a few days. In the winter it dries pretty quickly. So you can see this is really thickening up. You see that? So this is about where we want it to be right now. And I'm gonna just leave it, I think. I might give it one more mix, but I think I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, it's really, it's just about right now. I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit to low. And then I'm just going to, yeah, see it's like a pudding, pudding now. That's what we want it. Okay. So the things I'm going to add to this, I'm just, this is a spa soap. I have some raw sugar. And it adds a little bit of exfoliation, but once it mixes, it really, it's very light. But it also, sugar is very good for your skin, but it also supports the bubbles. So we don't use any artificial preservatives, anything that creates the bubbles, like sodium lauryl sulfate, anything like that. So we rely completely on the oils and the saponification process. So you can go to soapcalc.net. And on there is a soap calculator. It's a lye calculator. 
And you can add different oils, and I'll show you actually my recipe. So let me see this. So it breaks down, I can put in which oils I want, what percentage, it will tell me the hardness, the cleansing properties, the conditioning, which range they should be in, where my soap will fall in there based on the oils that I've used and the lye content, and it helps you figure all that out. So you can try different recipes. I have a whole bunch that I've tried over the last couple of years, and I've got some that, they're fine soaps, but they're not as good as, like this recipe is one of my basics now because it's just so good. It's creamy, it's bubbly, it makes you feel nice when you use it, and in its basic form, you don't even need essential oils. It's just a wonderful soap. But then if you add essential oils to it, I use this for my spa soap. I also use it as the basis for my um, frankincense and myrrh soap. And it's just it's one of my staples. The other one that I really love is I make a seaweed and salt water soap. So we go to the ocean, collect some salt water and some seaweed. And I named it after my mom because she loves the ocean. So it's Mary's Seaweed Soap. And that has no essential oils in it at all but people love it they love it so okay so i'm gonna add the raw sugar right now okay it's gonna speed up the saponification process a little bit so i have to watch it a little bit more closely but if i don't do it now it's really hard to mix it in consistently when it gets thicker you'll see why <laughs> also helps it to just kind of melt in there a little bit better than when you do it at the end it just this is very smooth at the end it gets kind of clunky it's not as easy to mix things in you'll see that when we mix the, the color and the essential oils. all right so now you can see how much that thickened up look at that now I'm going to leave it now what's going to happen is you can hear the applause in the background. I have a motion sensor in my kitchen and it applauds for me. Every woman should have one in the kitchen. When I finish doing the dishes, it applauds for me. Um, I'm going to leave this. It's going to sit until it becomes like mashed potatoes. I'll show you, I'll come back and I'll check on it. Uh, in the meantime, you just let it sit and leave it alone. Don't be tempted. Okay, so here's that mashed potato looking stage. a little it's all gonna be cut see if this is translucent up here eventually it will all be like that and that's when we'll add the color and do all that good stuff okay. and I'm gonna let it sit again you have to be very patient when you make soap well hot process during the cooking, you have to be patient. With cold process, you have to be patient during the curing. So, either way. Uh, translucent. Okay, so. Mix it. Now, I've got the heat off. You don't want it to cool too quickly because it makes it difficult, but you don't want to burn your hands either. I have my mold ready. I've cleaned it with alcohol. The mixing bowl I've also cleaned. I want to make sure you keep contaminants away from your soap. Okay, so now, here are my essential oils. Oh my god, they smell so good. It's lavender and eucalyptus. When you pour them because of the heat, just step back a little because you don't want to get a face full. They smell nice, but not when they vaporize. Almost lost you. Okay. Oh, they smell so good. Just keep mixing so it's very well mixed, uniformly mixed. Okay. So for this, I'm doing. It's lavender and eucalyptus, so I'm doing green, a layer of green, a layer of no color, and a layer of purple. So 
I'm going to start with the green. Pull a few scoops out. Okay. There's my green mixed. this any longer so I'm going to this out of the way. Okay. Seriously, I'm not usually this messy, but trying to watch it in the camera and do it at the same time is difficult. It takes some time to incorporate it. Just be patient. A nice pickle with just the green. I might have been able to be a little bit more generous with that, but I'll see. Yeah, I thought I could have been. Okay. The purple, I'm just going to throw right in there. I definitely could have gone a little bit heavier with the green, but that's what happens when you're recording. You just can't concentrate as well because you have more than one thing going on. So that's why I don't record too often. It's very difficult to do two things at once. Okay. So regardless of the colors or how they'll turn out, I never really know until I cut it. The essential oils are all the way through. That's the important thing. Okay. Here we go. Push it down. Make sure it's all good and mushed. It's good for getting your aggressions out. Okay, but I don't want this soap layered. I do do a layered soap. I do a. Um, um, candy corn soap in the fall, but I don't want this one layered. So what we're going to do is I'm going to scoop down, kind of go around the sides here. Right? See some of the green coming up? I'm going to scoop like in a swirl. It's not going to be as much green as I usually would like because of, well, I didn't scoop out enough green, but... Hopefully, we'll scoop enough. It'll still look good. see how this comes out. I can't remember how I did it last time. That's the one thing about recording. You can remember how you did it. Alright, and I want this swirly on the top. And that's it. We're done. We'll let it cool for 24 hours and cut it. Alright, so here's the soap. I'm going to tip it out. Try to do this without a tripod, so wish me luck. 
Come on, babe. Okay, I'm just gonna push it out. It might take a little more effort than that normally. Okay, so there's the green, there's the purple. I went back and I looked at another bar of this that I did, and I did swirl it differently. I did the non-colored soap on the bottom, then a layer of green and a layer of purple. So it won't be the same, but you know what? With hand-made soap, it's okay if there's some variances in how they turn out. Okay, so we're going to do a little cut here, a little slice, and we'll see what it looks like. This is always exciting. This is why I just... Cold process soap. I just don't know how people wait that long to see what they've got because I can't. I'm just not that patient. All right, ready? Just a little slice. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, that came out nice. I like that. It's very pretty. You can see it. One side, that's the rough cut side. And the inside, all the soaps will look like that. Oh my god, it smells so good. It smells so good. I got them more. I actually cheated. I didn't wait 24 hours because I'm just impatient. So it's, I made this about noontime. And right now it's about 11 o'clock at night. And I just wanted to cut it before I went to bed because I wanted to see how it looked. Because patience is not my thing. And every, every time you make it, no matter what you do, it comes out a little bit different. And that's the fun part about it. All right, so that's the spa soap, and this is really popular, and I love it, and I love the smell, and my kids love it. I have a son, Seamus, who's my smell tester. He's got an amazing nose. <laughs> he can smell everything, so I always run them by him. But that's it. It is pretty. And so the way I usually do it is the clear layer would be on the bottom, but I like this way too. It looks nice. All right, so that's it. That is the spa soap with lavender, um, eucalyptus essential oil, and raw sugar. If you want, you can get it at the Down to Earth Garden Shop. And hopefully I'll have a location in Manchester very soon. Take care.